Hello and welcome back to another video. So as you can see here, we have something a little different on the channel today, and that is the Xbox Series X. In this video, I'm going to talk about why I went with the Series X, um, kind of my history with gaming, as well as give you my first impressions after using this for just a little bit. So without further ado, let's get into it. Not sure how many unboxings you guys have seen. Obviously, the bigger tech YouTubers have gotten this, but they aren't the easiest to get. I ended up getting mine from Best Buy, and yeah, I'm quite excited. These have nice pull tabs, actually. I like the pull tabs on here. It kind of reminds me of Apple's ones. Okay, so I like this packaging a lot already. I've kind of seen some from the PlayStation one, but this is quite nice. Power your dreams, okay. okay so here we have the Series X. It does have some weight to it for sure, but we'll get into the rest of the box now. Here, this should be controller, power cable, and everything. So while I'm looking through these at least, let's talk about my history with Xbox. So my first Xbox was the Xbox 360. It was my first really non-Nintendo game system. And I really enjoyed it. The Xbox 360 probably held some of my favorite memories while gaming. And after the 360, I went to the Xbox One. And that mainly was because I really liked my 360 and I liked the controller better. And as you can see, the controller is very reminiscent of the Xbox One. It's got a nice texture on the back, USB Type-C, and the D-pad is a little different. But other than that, it's pretty similar and it feels quite comfortable in the hand. But it doesn't have the haptics and the adaptive triggers of the PlayStation. So why did I get this? Although, you know, I have been an Xbox guy, I did get a PlayStation 4 even when I had an Xbox One. I was very into gaming at the time and I wanted to play some of those PlayStation exclusives. I like both of them for sure, but at that time I think I liked the Xbox One a little bit better. Here, before we keep going on, we got a USB 2.1 that will allow for 4K at 120 frames per second, like this advertises, if you have a TV or monitor capable of that. So why did I get this over the PlayStation 5? I actually wanted the PlayStation 5 more, but I'm sure you know about the availability of both. And the PlayStation was just a lot harder to get. I still haven't been able to get my hands on one, but I was able to get a Series X from Best Buy. So that's what I did. And I'm gonna test this out for you guys, see how much I like it. Maybe I'll keep it over the PlayStation, who knows? But either way, I'm excited to have a next gen console in my hands for sure. This is the last thing we got in here, it's just really like a setup guide. But yeah, let's get on to the next part which is showing you guys the Xbox itself. From a packaging standpoint, I have to say I think I like the way Xbox did it for sure. Now, I haven't seen the PlayStation in person, really only seen a couple videos, so maybe that would change when I see it in person, but I have to say I really do like this packaging. And there she is. So back here we got all the ports, as you guys probably know. We got two USB Type A, Ethernet, the storage expansion, which I think costs two hundred dollars or something to get an extra terabyte, uh, HDMI out, and the power cord. Okay, so we're back with the Xbox Series X after using it for a few days now, and here's my overall experience. The games we played are mainly Fortnite and Assassin's Creed Valhalla which both utilize some of the features of the Xbox Series X. I'm going to intermix some of the gameplay between both those games in this. We didn't use a game recorder, rather I showed the TV just to give that perspective, but if you want to see more in-depth gameplay with a game recorder, just let me know. I want to first start by talking about the controller. So the controller was one of the main reasons I chose the Xbox One over the PS4 when it first came out. And I'm very used to this controller. It feels almost identical to the Xbox One's controller, which isn't a bad thing, but then you compare it to its new competition in the PS5 controller. And I can say after using this controller, I like the layout a lot, feels good, but the haptics were just okay. And I think lately I've gotten used to the really good haptic motors in phones like the iPhone, the Pixel, and more, and it just made it feel a little bit cheaper. Now I wanna really try the PS5's controller to see if their improved haptics does make a difference, but I'm guessing it will just based on stuff I've heard. With that being said, it doesn't hurt the experience totally. I still had a really good time playing some of these games. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I played in 4K on my 4K TV at 60 frames a second, and it looked just great. I loved 
playing that game and I'm still gonna continue to play because it's such an immersive experience. Everything looks so sharp and I don't feel like I need high frame rates for that particular game. Now, me and my brother played some Fortnite. He plays a lot more than me and he plays on a PC where he's getting higher frame rates for sure. And we took advantage of the Xbox Series X's 120 hertz. Now that was not at 4K because we don't have a 4K 120 hertz monitor, but he said that it looked really smooth when he was playing, even in comparison to his PC. Now his PC utilizes the 144 hertz display he has, a little bit more, and obviously we have an Xbox controller, which he wasn't too fond of, but the overall smoothness and how it looked was really good. We were easily hitting that 120 frames per second number consistently. I've really noticed the difference in the UI of the Xbox Series X, not in the way it looks, but rather how quick everything is. When I had my Xbox One, I would have to just wait a little bit longer, and this, everything just feels so snappy and smooth. I also really enjoyed the quick resume feature because it let me get into Assassin's Creed Valhalla really quickly, which is just magical in a sense. When you're starting up games, the improved SSD is just so noticeable because on my Xbox One, I felt like I just waited forever for games to finally load. But on the Xbox Series X, it loaded up really quickly and you're into gaming in a very timely manner. So I gotta say, this is our first impressions and we'll go more in depth as well as make more videos on this. So let me know in the comments what you wanna see. But my experience has been really positive. I'm gonna have to get the PS5 in my hands to see which one I'll wanna keep in the long term. I do technically have a Windows laptop that I've used for gaming because it has fine specs and can run most games. So the Xbox makes a little less sense from that standpoint because there's more exclusives on the PlayStation I might keep the Xbox if I just enjoy the experience a little bit more than the PlayStation. So thank you so much for watching. Again, let me know what you want to see with this console. I'd be happy to try out many things for you guys. I hope you all are doing well and peace.